وصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ومن يوق شح نفسه فأولئك هم المفلحون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وزفنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا وزكنا اجتنابا There was a son who came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to complain about his dad. We live in very strange times. I've seen many dads sitting with their sons, helpless when the son says to the dad, you never did anything for me. Dad, you never did anything for me. Or dad, what did you do for me? It's the height of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يُوْقَ شُحَ نَفْسِهِ Whoever gets saved from his own selfishness. So this man, he comes to the Prophet ﷺ and complains to the Prophet that my dad takes my money. The Prophet said, okay, bring your dad. Now he's more hurt that my son has come to me and I, he finds out what the prophets complained about me, the father, has complained, the son is complaining about the father to Rasulullah This hadith is, by the way, has many versions. The one I'm talking about is in Ibn Majah. And in Tafsir Qurtubi, under the ayah, وَحْفَزْ جَنَاهَكَ Under that Tafsir. So, the man comes as he, as soon as he enters the masjid of the Prophet, he's already heard, and he says to the Prophet, because now he has to defend himself, O Prophet, ask him, did I ever spend money on anyone else other than him and his mother and his khala? And before this man came to the Prophet, وسلم, Jibreel came to the Prophet. And Jibreel told the Prophet that Allah said, that you ask this man, this sheikh, ask him, this old man, ask him about the couplets he formed in his heart. He had made up some, when he saw the situation, that what is my son doing to me? So he thought of some poetry in his heart. It just came naturally. So the Prophet said, Da'a, leave this. Tell me, Jibreel is sitting here. Tell me, about the poetry you made in your heart that no ears, even your own ear, has not heard yet. And he said to the Prophet Sallallahu The O Prophet sitting with you, he always increases my Iman. That how did you know that I had come up with some poetry about this situation that I'm in? So he read the poem to the Prophet. I'm going to share it with you. Let's see how it works out. I gave you nourishment, you can say, since you were a child. And I gave you every benefit that I could give you. And then he says, When you would get sick, 
because of your sickness only upon them. This is the father now reading the poetry that Jibreel had told the Prophet ﷺ that ask him what's the poetry in his heart. So now, Obviously, if you are affected by listening to this after 1400 years, the Prophet was crying and his beard was wet. But he wasn't the only one crying. Jibreel was also crying. You know what's so interesting? That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to create man and the angels objected, why will you create on earth something that will cause fasad in the world? But then once Allah created everyone and Allah created the believers and everybody, what do you find in the beginning of Surah Shura? Surah Shura. That the angels of the throne of the Arsh that carry the Arsh of Allah, whatever, they do istighfar for the mu'mineen. They do istighfar for the believers. This is selflessness. وَمَنْ يُوْقَ شُحْحَ نَفْسِي And it starts that at any cost, try your best being good to your parents. Because if you can't be good to your parents, how are you going to be good to anybody else? That's where it starts. Those, and then, وَمَنْ يُوْقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِي Whoever is saved from his own selflessness, this is the beginning of having an attitude like the angel, like your ruh can almost become like an angel. Where you put other people first. 
You know, we were talking about fragrances. If you wear a fragrance and it goes to other people, you, but you wear it with that intention. When something good happens to other people, you're happy. The way the angels would be happy. You don't make fun of your brothers. You don't criticize them. When you see them, you smile. When you meet them, you meet them with good ikhlaq. You even stand up for them. If you dislike someone, you do more dua for them. If you dislike someone, you meet them even more for the sake of Allah because then that is really for the sake of Allah. Get, you know this, these surahs called Musabbihat, they're so interesting. So Al-Hashar also mentions this. يُعْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَوْ كَانَ بِهُمُ الْخَصَاصَةِ They choose, they prefer others over themselves even if they fall into a loss. And وَمَنْ يُوَقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ Whoever is saved from his own selfishness. It's a very basic thing to do, but it's nowadays a very difficult thing to do. Because in the modern society, what is the result? And you know what's related to this? I don't want to go into the science of it, but it's partly related to stress. And when you have stress, you're worried about yourself. And when you relate it, when you have stress, you're worried about your situation and you can't think about the other person's situation. And when somebody tells you something good, do you ever feel the joy that they feel for the good that they're going through? Or if they're in pain, can you feel the pain that they're going through? If you don't, then what's the purpose of being in a jama'ah? What's the purpose of having an amir? What's the purpose of being together? If you don't feel the pain of others, if you don't feel the joy of others, if you don't feel empathy towards others and put other people first, the only difference is we have to pay bills and we have to care about ourselves. But our attitude inside should be like angels who have no bills to pay. They're just always putting other people first. If you look at the Qur'an and you look at how angels talk, they generally always talk in the collective. Always talk in the collective. نَحْنُ نُسَبِّهُ بِحَمْدِكَ And so, it's very important to get rid of and to fight against our selfishness. To get out of the victimized mode. What is the victimized mode? When you've been hurt in life, yes, you've been hurt. Everyone's been hurt according to whatever Allah has written. Every single person. They're, I mean, now they're finding out there's daily trauma. There are books about, <laughs> you know, books about daily trauma. What do you want to do? Everyone has loss. Everyone is a victim. But if you're gonna, if you're gonna live your life looking at your victimization, I mean, think of this. Really, it's, it's a miracle, absolute miracle. That the companions of the Prophet ﷺ that were tortured in Mecca, and then Quraysh fights them for years, almost a decade. Badr, Ohad, these are just the ones that were the main ones, but there were hundreds almost. Hundreds of battles. You fought battles, hundreds of battles against someone. And now you're going to conquer that city. And you take no, not only the Prophet, but all his companions, all his companions, those that were hurt and victimized, those whose families were killed, those whose, you know, because what happened in, in Badr, for example, father against the son, Abu Bakr is fighting against his son. The biggest, you can say, the claim that Quraysh had on the Prophet in the Makkis, period. You can say blame that Muhammad, you have divided this family. What you have divided us. The point being, these people that were torturing the companions of the Prophet, like Bilal, Khabab bin Ard, and so many others, when they came to Mecca, why were they able to put their victimization away? It's just a miracle. If five of us, six of us are hurt and we go somewhere, anything can happen. 
Here we're talking about 10,000 strong enter into Mecca, not a single hand raised. Except by the permission of the Prophet They weren't victim. The, pro- the Sahaba were not victimized by their situation. The Prophet d- didn't let his situation victimize himself, nor did the Sahaba let their situation, their negative situation, their bad situation, whatever you want to call it, the circumstances they were in life, they never let that become the issue that would dictate to them how they would behave. And how they would feel more. Their, their, their mizaj, their, their attitude, their mood was not that of the person that has been victimized. Because when you're victimized, it's hard to be selfless. It's hard to think of, you know, it's like a blister. Every time you have a blister, you feel like touching the blister. And what happens when you touch the blister? You feel more pain or you feel the pain. But you want to touch the blister, right? Because it makes you kind of feel good too, right? So it's like the ego, right? The blister. It's pain and then it's exa- you're exasperating the pain and you keep touching the blister. But the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, selfless, selfless. What caused them to leave Medina and go to all these different parts of the world? You still find their graves. All, all the way up to China you find their graves. Till the river of Oxus. Till the boundaries of Constantinople. Abu Ayyub bin Sa'id. Selfless. They didn't really... I mean, obviously, Your nafs has a right upon you, but these were not... They, that is in terms of Sharia. But the internal mizaj, the internal attitude was not that at all. It was like selflessness. Completely selfless. And so, here we find ourselves in a situation where we spend most of our days thinking about ourselves. You know, some men, they like to think about themselves, especially teenagers, sitting in front of the mirror for like 5, 10, 20 minutes, hardcore focus on the mirror, thinking about themselves. And I mean, to some degree it's okay, but then it comes to a point where it's not okay. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, Allah says, وَمَن يُوقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِ And whoever is able to save himself from his own selfishness, فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِهُونَ They are the successful. So you have to ask yourself, am I selfish? How much do I think of myself? Is it easy for... And then what does Allah say? وَمَا يُقْرِبُ اللَّهَ قَرْطًا حَسَنًا Whoever gives a loan to Allah. Why? Right after this, by the way, like I mentioned this, but I'll mention it a little bit more and re-mention it today. The surah before this is Tul Munafiqun and the, the medicine given to Tul Munafiqun is if you have nifaq, do infaq. If you have nifaq, if you're a hypocrite, and by the way, here let me mention something about nifaq so it will make more sense. Nafaq was an animal, or it's like having two holes in which an animal can come out from one side or the other side. And why does somebody become nifaq? Because he doesn't want the stress to be on one side or the other. Either you're with the believers or disbelievers, he wants to be on both sides. He wants to be, he doesn't want to rock the boat. If the disbelievers are winning, he'll try to join them secretly. If the believers are winning, he'll say, see, we were with you. Alam nakum ma'akum? Were we not with you? That's the hypocrite. But he, that is a true hypocrite. But each one of us should feel like we're a hypocrite. Because I don't do everything I know. I become lazy. The difference between my knowledge and what I do is like heavens and earth. 
And a true believer is concerned about this gap. It bothers him. And he never sees himself perfect. Why? Because there's always going to be a gap. There will always be a gap between what you know and what you usually do and what you're doing now. Or what you're doing as an exception. And that gap will always exist. And the more you're a believer, the more that, that gap magnifies for you as your reality. Over there Allah mentioned, if you have the problem of being, nifa, having, of being a munafiq, then do infaq. Spend in the cause of Allah. Your heart will be fixed. Over here, same thing. This ayah itself is telling us, if you have a problem of being selfish, then again, do the same thing. Spend in the cause of Allah. Spend. It should be your habit that whenever you come to the masjid, 50 cents, one dollar, two cents, just Put it in. Zakat is not enough. It is not. Zakat is minimum legal requirement. But if you want to help Islam and you want to help and do tazkiyah of yourself, in fact, in the Quran, Inna lana al akhirati wal ulaf, anzartukum naran taladwa, la yaslaha illa al ashqa. What does it say after that? Alladhi yu'ti malahu. You cannot have purity of heart without giving that wealth. That means you find a job, you work, and then after finding a job and working, then now you give in the cause of Allah. And you should give that much in the cause of Allah that it hurts where you have to feel some pain. Not like you have $50,000 and you gave $10 to a poor person and they said, okay, I did sadaqah. This is, this is not how the companions work. I'll mention this. Uh, let me see how I can put this. I asked a very, I asked a source, let's put it that way. They had sadaqah in the masjid of the Prophet every single day. Every single prayer. Somebody was giving sadaqah. Every single day, somebody was giving sadaqah in the masjid of the Prophet. وسلم, in the time of the Sahaba. Every single, it never happened that you went to the masjid and somebody wasn't giving sadaqah. So, but it's not just about money. It's about how you think, how you interact, how you feel, your attitude. Get beyond yourself. Right? Get beyond yourself. We're not important. Meaning I'm not important, you're not important, none of us are important. I mean, think of it. You know, we were in, how many of us went to that camping trip? And you know, we saw the leaves, the trees. I mean, in front of Allah, what's the difference between a leaf and us? The leaf is doing tasbih and has no sin. We do tasbih and we have many sins. What's the difference? Does Allah need us more than the leaf? Does Allah need us more than the leaf? Like what? what? Do we feel that if we don't, if we have a good attitude towards other people, we will lose something? That if I don't take, think about myself, then no one will think about me but me. Right? That's, the, that's what it is. That we feel like I'm taking care of myself. I got myself. No one's going to care about me but me. That's the stress. That's the anxiety. That's the victimization. Uh, I've talked too much. Okay. So, وَمَن يُقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ You have to get beyond yourself. I mean, if in a marriage, you're only thinking of yourself, she's also thinking about herself. He's thinking about what did she do for me, and he's thinking what did she do for me. It's not going to work. You have to get beyond yourself. 
to make things work, to make relationships work, to make a jama'ah work, to make the, uh, the amarat of the amir work. There will be hundreds of decisions the amir will make that you don't agree with. What are you going to do? Make a hissy fit? Find a clique that agrees with you? The, I'll end with this point. I mentioned it last time and I need to mention it again. If the Amir says, okay, we'll have a convention in such and such place. Or he, Amir asks the Shura, he asks all of you, let's have a convention. We can have it here or here. Now you're very passionate about your opinion. We should definitely have it there because I know some more brothers will come there. Another brother says, no, we should have it in this place because it'll be more cost effective. Now the Amir has to make a choice of one or the other, right? So what's going to happen with the half of the Jama'ah that goes one side and the other half goes the other side? No, you got to let it go. أَنَقُولُ بِالْحَقِّ أَيْنَ مَا كُنَّا This is part of the bayah. Say what you got to say. Let it out. And then move on. Let it go. Let it go. We don't know how to let things go. وَمَنْ يُوْقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِي فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Save yourselves from your own selfishness. Then you will be on the path to be like the angels. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those وَمَنْ يُوْقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِي فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those يُعْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَوْ كَانَ بِهُمْ خَصَاصَةً that those that choose other people, even if there's a benefit, there's a loss to them. You know, there's a very famous event. I'll end with this. Okay, sorry. sorry. One, one point, one point. There was a, you all know this, but I'm just reminding you of what you already know. The battle was happening and they brought water to a Sahabi. He said, my brother, he needs it more than me. Go give him the water went to him and he said, no, my other brother needs the water more than me. And like this they go, I think it was seven people. And the seventh person said, no, that brother of mine, he needs the water more than He went back to the first person, he died. And all seven of them died this way. Choosing other people over themselves. You can practice this every day. Especially with people we have a problem with. You got a problem with someone? Is it perfect? Then that's when you'll know how selfish or unselfish you are. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the people, I mean, let's may Allah make us a jama'ah of a people who are selfless, who have the quality of being selfless, who are not so self-absorbed. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسان المسلمين والمسلمات اللهم صل وسلم على محمد آمين يا رب.